Milky Mitch, and I would like to welcome everyone to a Christmas edition of Learn with Laylee. I would like to start by wishing everybody a very Merry Christmas. This is normally an event we would hold in person, but this year, 2020, has had other plans in store for us. In these crazy COVID times, we have had to channel the Christmas spirit of Ebenezer Scrooge and find fun and creative, interactive ways to reach out to our customers of past, present, and dairy future. We appreciate everyone who has tuned in today. We have an informative and hopefully fun agenda planned for you. I think it's important to note that we apologize to all the farmers out there in Dairyland, uh, but with this being an online event, obviously there will be no free lunch this year. To those who pre-registered, you will be receiving a small token of our appreciation over the coming weeks. And for those that stay tuned in throughout the event, there will be more opportunities to increase your chances to win a free Luna brush. At the end of each question and answer period, I will give a new promo code. You will enter the promo code on our website in the comment box below the video to have more ballots entered into the draw. The agenda for today's Learn with Laylee event will be as follows. Three robot information sessions followed by a question and answer session, a breakout session on what's new with Laylee, and a session on robot economics. We will wrap up our time with a farm management support session with the best looking Frenchman at West Coast Robotics followed by another question and answer period. Again, after each Q&A session, I will release another promo code. Every time you hear a new promo code, please enter it into the chat box and your name will be added again to the draw for the free Luna. During a difficult calendar year, it, is, has, it has been a period of learning at West Coast Robotics and Laylee. However, we have very so much to be thankful for. West Coast Robotics watched as our Laylee family grew this year in British Columbia with 14 new robots, one vector feeding robot, and five discovery collectors installed. Today's total of milking robots in British Columbia is 185 Laylee robots. Laylee also installed our 5,000th robot in North America this year, and that number has grown rapidly, like the strong, steady flow of a Holstein cow and the Laylee A5. The theme of today's presentation is what's new. For those that live in the Agassiz area, they know there's a lot going on at West Coast Robotics as we get ready in the coming days for our big move. With that in mind, I would like to introduce everyone to our owner and founder, Brian Rodenberg, for our first segment on what's new at West Coast Robotics. I'd like to begin by welcoming you all here to our online Learn with Laylee event. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope we can provide you with a fun and informative session. I would also like to thank all of our customers, employees, and employees for their continued support over the years, especially in these somewhat challenging times. Before we get into what's new at West Coast Robotics, I'll give you a little brief history of what's old. We opened our doors in 2008, and over the years we've expanded rapidly. In 2011, we expanded to Vancouver Island, and in 2012, we expanded to the Okanagan Valley. This put us ready to serve all of BC. We have robots currently running on the north of Vancouver Island, the south of Vancouver Island, Creston, Smithers, Cache Creek, the Okanagan, and of course, the Fraser Valley. With the addition of stalls, headlockers, and waterbeds in 2013, James Way Manure Equipment in 2014, and Seiko Ventilation in 2015, we were ready to sell complete systems to farmers. 2015 also brought another new challenge, the release of the Laylee Vector. We installed our first three Laylee Vectors in the local dairy market in 2015. In 2017, we installed our first Dairy Excel project, which, which allowed us to see both the challenges and the benefits of milking cows with robots on a large dairy. Currently, we are operating out of three locations in BC with 22 passionate and energetic, energetic employees to serve our customers' needs. <clears throat> we aim to introduce the most innovative technologies to the dairy farmers of BC and to support those products with the highest level of efficiency and knowledge in technical and management support. We want to improve the sustainability and profitability of BC dairy farms while improving the lifestyle of the owners, their cows, and those who work for them. Every decision we make, everything we do, we must always remember these two things. So the main thing at West Coast Robotics is service. We have a little joke. 
We started out in the early days, we said the main thing is service. It's all about service. Service is what sells. Today, we say the main thing is keeping the main thing the main thing, which is service. 2020 and the COVID have brought many changes and challenges to West Coast Robotics. We've learned to communicate internally more efficiently using online platforms for meetings. This has allowed us to improve how we communicate, especially with our colleagues outside of the Fraser Valley. We've always tracked milk quality, service costs, numbers of alarms per robot per farm. And through COVID, we have found more efficient ways to track these things and have begun tracking our own KPIs, such as technical performance, inventory performance, and sales and marketing performance. This should allow us to continue to provide industry-leading service and support for our customers. We've seen a fair amount of growth in 2020 internally as I've begun to loosen my control on each facet of West Coast Robotics. Moving to more of a coaching role, I'm finding more enjoyment in my job, and I feel this will imp improve our employee satisfaction, which in turn should improve our customer satisfaction. With a few bumps in the road, as there always is with change, I've seen many of my senior staff rise to the occasion and take on new responsibilities, adding their own tweaks on how things are done. This has really resulted in a better overall customer experience for the end user, and I'm excited to see where it can go as we settle into our new roles. 2020 has created a, new, a unique opportunity with potential employees as we found it much easier to find qual qualified, energetic people to put in place at this time. We've added a warehouse clerk, a service administrator, two milking techs, a feeding tech, a full-time project manager, and a second full-time salesperson. We've moved to an account management model, and sometimes with growth comes change. So some of you will see me on your farms a little less than you have in the past, but you will for sure see Gray or Mitch on your farm quarterly to ensure that the wheels are greased and things are working properly. This has really allowed me to free up a fair amount of time to work on improving the efficiency in the customer experience and to prepare for the massive growth we expect to see in the coming years. Now for the fun stuff, equipment. 2020 has been a remarkable year as far as new equipment goes. In late 2018, Laley released a full suite of, of new models, including the A5, the Vector M2, the Juno Next, and the Discovery 120. 2020 has seen the small bugs worked out of the new equipment and proven Laley is a more mature, stable, and reliable partner. In the past, Laley has been guilty of releasing products too early. This was not the case in 2020. We were expecting to have major challenges with so many new products. As a team, we've been pleasantly surprised by how easy the transition has been and how, how well the quality of the components and the, and the software of the new products has been from Laley. The A5 has already proven to be the top performing robot in the market, giving us the edge over our competitors for yet another generation. And for the first time, we see some of our customers sustainably filling over 100 kilograms of quota per robot per day. The release of the Vector M2, along with major software improvements, has given me the confidence to say automated feeding is ready for the market. The Juno Next has combined the best of both the previous models, simplifying our training needs and our inventory requirements. The Discovery 120 has proven to be a cost-effective, innovative product for manure management within your barn. The Discovery 120 has also proven once again that Laley and West Coast Robotics are shaping the way dairy farmers farm within British Columbia. And this is truly my passion. With new equipment comes used equipment. With some of our existing customers continuing to innovate and push the limits of the Holstein cow, we see some farms upgrading to A5s. We have internally developed a full refurbishment program for all used models of equipment allowing our customers to get into robotic milking for much smaller capital outlay, giving them both warranty and peace of mind. The A3, in my mind, was the first truly viable robot on the market. It's close to my heart as I was involved in prototyping this robot, and I still believe that it is the third best robot on the market after the A5 and the A4. One can get into robotic milking with A3s for half the price of what it would cost today for A5s. 2021 will be the most exciting year yet within West Coast Robotics. We'll begin to move into our new shop over Christmas. We should see an increase in efficiency, 
an increase in our organization, and our team is super excited about the next chapter for West Coast Robotics and what it has to bring. We will see the addition of an operations manager, a service manager, West Coast will get a new logo. We've entered into an agreement with Encore Business Solutions to improve our ERP. And this in turn should improve our billing system as this is the number one complaint from our customers today. With the challenges of new people and new equipment behind us, we will be, we will be able to invest in improving our current systems and we will see the release of Laylee Horizon, our new cow management software, which makes more decisions on its own and uses a lot more AI to make those decisions. It also takes actual dollars costs into considerations when making those decisions. We will hopefully see the approval and sale of a Laylee Orbiter in BC, which is a fully automated milk processing plant. We will see our 200th milking robot installed and running our 150th Juno feed pusher, and our 10th vector. As we are always looking for the newest innovations in dairy, we will begin to investigate the viability of the Lely Exos, the Lely Sphere, and vertical farming for the BC dairy market. What is the Exos? The Exos is a newly released product from Lely that is an autonomous vehicle which heads out to the field and both harvests your grass and spreads fertilizer at the same time. It then returns to the barn and either feeds your cows or puts it into the kitchen for the vector to deliver. The Lely Sphere is a manure separation system that's very innovative from Lely that actually separates the solids and the manure, the solids and the liquids in the manure before it even enters the manure system. In turn, separating your phosphates and your nitrates, getting them ready for the exos to deliver the appropriate fertilizer. What is vertical farming? You may have seen it in a few places. Vertical farming is done within a building or a shipping container, under lights, with heat, using sprouts. We see that there's a potential in the BC market for this with automated feeding as well as for cow health. We, were be we will begin to investigate these three things to see where things will go for us in the future. Man, that Jesse sure knows how to put together a PowerPoint, eh guys? Anyways, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to the bright future we hold together. And with that, I will give it back to Mitch. Thanks, Brian, for the update. As, as Brian mentioned, it's a, it's a very exciting time for us at West Coast Robotics. I'm sure many farmers that have had the good fortune to build a new barn can relate to the excitement that we feel as we prepare for the move to our new facility. I think one thing is for sure is that the future is bright with West Coast and Laley. And speaking of the future and new builds, what are your plans? New barns, renovations, where do you see your farm in the next five years? One thing is for sure, robotic milking is and continues to be the future in milking equipment. Please join me in welcome, welcoming the one and only Gray Prescott to talk a little bit with you about the Lely A5 astronaut. Thanks Mitch for that wonderful introduction. And hello to everybody <clears throat> tuning in out there. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I'm Gray Prescott and I've been with West Coast Robotics for seven years now. In this time, I've been a project manager and for the last two years, a salesman. I manage the territory encompassing Chilliwack and all points west of Abbotsford, including Vancouver Island. And I'm here today to talk to you about the latest Lely milking robot the A5. The Lely Astronaut A5 milking robot is the most recent in a long line of astronaut milking robots from Lely. Beginning with the A2 and moving to the A3 and A3 Next and the direct predecessor, the A4. Launched in the spring of 2018, the A5 milking robot represents all the lessons learned through 30 years of robotic milking experience. West Coast Robotics is proud to have 37 A5 milking robots running in British Columbia today. This is part of our total installed base of 185 milking robots. This robot has the best pretreatment in the business, a fast and accurate electric arm that attaches cows quickly and provides precision post dipping. With the same footprint as the A4 before it, but a heavier frame 
and revolutionary hybrid arm, the A5 robot is the most reliable milking robot on the market today. A more powerful CPU improves upon the, the same great laser technology found on other Laylee milking robots to scan at a higher resolution and keep track of the teats, teat location to make better decisions on how to attach cows, which comes in most helpful during the first time attachments. From the first attachment with one push of a button to dry off and all cow touch points in between, this machine will meet the needs of all of your cows and support them throughout their entire lactation to make the most milk they can while maintaining optimum health and condition. Today, West Coast Robotics has A5 milking robots working on farms with as few as 30 cows and one unit and as large as 460 cows with eight units. But what makes it work? The Laylee A5 is 131 inches wide and 93 inches tall. It's 90 inches deep and it weighs 1,543 pounds. It features 11% more stainless steel than its predecessor, the A4. One central unit is needed per two A5 robot units, which houses the power supply, chemical pumps, and the vacuum pump for two machines. Modest power and water requirements of 240 volt 30 amps and one three quarter inch cold water line per two robots mean that you need no external hot water tanks, vacuum pumps, or VFDs, resulting in less install costs. The hybrid arm works by air supported electric actuators. It's silent and precise. There's no need to convert power to air and air to movement. This saves on air requirements and on energy. The milk pump, revised from, an A4, from the A4 cartridge pump, the A5 uses a low maintenance centripetal pump. Knowledge is power. Sensors that come standard on the A5 measure milk flow, milk temperature, conductivity, milk yield, body weight, milk color, rumination, and fat and protein per milking, all with no consumable cost. An optional somatic cell counter provides SCC readings for the cost of one cent per test. This includes the reagent and the milk sampled. All of this gives you more information than you gather yourself today and keeps track of everything while supporting decisions. You still do the job of being a farmer but now with more direction and less to remember. Preventative maintenance and emergency response provided 24 seven by West Coast Robotics keep those A5s working like the day they were installed. Farmer fixes in between visits through phone support save on callouts, as evidenced by milking robots that we have working in places like Creston and Smithers. What does the machine achieve? Service costs, and I know this is a big one. On average, the A5 costs $1,100 per robot per month. Total running costs, including service, both planned and emergency, and consumables like liners and chemicals. We see BCC and SCC numbers below the, BC, the British Columbia averages. And milkings visits per cow per day um, as high as 3.4. The farmer is able to control this through milk access settings and feed tables to try and achieve about 12 liters per milking. Failures per robot per day average less than one on many farms. This means on a given day, there's not a single cow that enters the A5 who qualifies to be milked and does not leave after having a complete milking. Free flow. With a large open concept box, cows walk straight in and straight out. They can see around them during the milking process. No indexing means a pleasant robot visit, facilitating more visits and less fetching. Valuable information, as I mentioned before, and more control over your herd and each cow in it. What can it do for your farm? 
When I ask, what can it do for your firm? I mean that, not what can it do for you, but what can it do for your bottom line, your employees' lives, and the lives of your cows? Free flow. The cow does what she wants, when she wants. And cow comfort makes free flow work. Calm cows in a free flow situation are easy to work with and have less stress in their life. But don't lose that hands-on approach to farming. Without the distraction of having to hang cups, you notice a whole lot more. The robot collects and analyzes data to find problems for you. Eliminating the holding area from the cow's life is a great benefit as well. The best waiting times in a parlor are 45 minutes to an hour. This is time when they are not eating, they are not laying down, and they are not able to drink water. Health attention reports point out problems before they manifest as symptoms. Top tier heat detection provided by SCR and NADAP take the guesswork out of exactly when to breed each cow for optimum conception. This helps you have a great herd health. Labor savings, less turnover, and increased flexibility provides a nicer working day for farmers and their staff. Incorporate sorting into your life. Have the cows you need to interact with in a special pen at the front of the barn. Leave the cows that you do not need to see alone to do their own thing. Automated foot bathing makes it easy to selectively choose who goes through the foot bath and how often. There are many AMS machines on the market today. So what makes the A5 special? Cow comfort, eye flow, no indexing, and a large robot box. This is based on experience. Making the box larger and elimination of indexing made the average visits jump from 2.7 to 3.0 on the A3 milking robot versus the A2. Going to iFlow on the A4 resulted in an increase to 3.4 visits or more. Our, the A5 hangs the slowest quarter first, and it's the only robot on the market which does so. The pre-treatment using brushes, it's effective cleaning and provides tactile stimulation. There's no risk of cup slip while there is dirty water on a teat. Teat cups remain clean because they only touch clean teats. And the shortest hot wash time in the business means that there's more time for the A5 to milk cows. There's few moving parts underneath the cow meaning that sand barns are not a problem for the A5. Short tubes with the milk flow sensors and pulsation control close to the teat cups make the astronaut fast at detecting pinched teats or cups that have been knocked off. The silent arm babysits the milking process, making first time attachment easier. There's no hoses to be stepped on here. The arm is between the cow's hoofs and the cups. The pre-milk is done by the cup that does the milking. It measures by volume to separate exactly nine milliliters per quarter. Takeoff points for each quarter are a percentage of peak milk flow, not a set number. So there's no guessing what is best for each cow. The most advanced feed tables on the market allow for complete customization. Feeding time spread evenly over the entire expected milk duration helps cows remain calm during the milking, the entire milking process. And the excellent software and support to make the most out of it help you realize your goals. So why should you have one on your firm today? This brings me to the end of my presentation, but I just want to finish with a few points. I'm going to say it again, cow comfort, the eye flow configuration, the big box, no indexing, and feed that ma time that matches milk duration. Low maintenance of only 15 minutes per robot per day by the farmer keeps the robot clean and in good working order. Low running costs of $1,100 per month. Little downtime. This makes the machine low hassle and provides more flexibility for your day. The technical support to keep it running well. 
and the support to make the most out of it. No robot is an island. It takes thoughtful burn design, expertise to install it correctly, and continuing fire management support to help you achieve your goals. West Coast Robotics has more experience in robotic milking than any dealer in British Columbia today. More milk in the tank, less work with more flexibility, a better life for the cows and people on your farm. Please contact West Coast Robotics today to see what Laylee can do for you. And now we're gonna move on to a video highlighting a, a local Chilliwack farm. This is a, a family owned farm, Windermar Holsteins, run by the Marhus family. And they were kind enough to share their story with us um, and kind of explain their journey towards uh, implementing robotic milking as part of their plan to manage growth and succession on their farm. And here they are. We looked at multiple different robots and with all the information and just all the options that came with the Lely, we liked the Lely's the best and West Coast comes with Lely. So. Um, I'm the numbers person behind this and for me it came down to the numbers uh, making the most sense both in the price, the original price, but also in the maintenance, um, the water usage, the plumbing. This, just made the most sense. So we wanted to go with the company that had the longest track record with robots, uh, maybe the most reliability. Right. I feel like Lily just knew what they were talking about with the planning yeah. and they just, it helped transition us building because they just knew what they were doing. I don't know. The week of transition was um, scripted. It was very well thought out. There's a plan. Um, I'm not sure every company has that plan, but we, if you trust their plan, it works and trust them. They know what they're talking about. Um, but it was so much fun too. At the same time, as hard as it was, I look at that week and think it's fun. That's my first word. Right, so, transition was fun. It was fun yeah. and it worked well. Yeah. So nice. yeah, we liked it. We're really happy at the end of that, how well the cows uh, went in on the, ro on the robots on their own. And the production went up and up. And up, which was awesome. That's good. That's positive. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have not really seen much issue with West Coast, and they're like they're always answering the phone. Like, somebody will show up if you request. Like if you don't know what you're doing, and you don't have an answer, or you can't figure out the problem. Yeah. Just just tell them, and the service team will show up, and it's fantastic. Um, changes. Um, so when we started this process, it was, for me, it was like, okay, we'll do this and we're done. Um, uh, they're already talking about building and adding, so I can see it happening. Yeah. That the changes have been so positive that, um, provided we can get quota, you know, there's growth down the, down the road, more growth. When we first started up, probably within about a month, Marty walked in the house at 7.30 in the morning for breakfast and in 37 years of marriage that's never happened so i actually thought something was wrong and that he needed help or something had gone wrong and he's like no i'm just done i'm here for breakfast so yeah it was, it's kind of neat that the time's freed up and uh in the last month um on a more personal note my my mother died and i was so grateful for robots that he was there yeah that's that's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for COVID, we might have a social life. Here. Yeah. So, if right. it wasn't for COVID. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I spend more time with my family and with the second child on the way. It's, it's nice to be able to take care of our toddler for the time being while Cassie's pregnant. <laughs> and <laughs> afterwards. Well sometimes. Uh, having the the butter fat, the proteins available at any given time. Well, it, all the information that's available at the ro robot is very handy. Having the cows, just for general info, if you're have, wondering where the cow's at in her lactation, that's available on the screen. Uh, mentioned the weight floors. Uh, 
if a cow is not putting on weight, you don't have, you can make a decision not to breed the cow at that point. If she shows the heat and you look like, oh, she's not putting weight on yet, then don't bother breeding her because it's not going to catch. Having the increase in milk production, uh, not having to rely on employees to come milk on the schedule, uh, not having to be in the parlor all the time. Uh, these are all, this has all helped us to achieve our goals. Yeah. Yeah, for, um, for us, uh, we're looking, you know, retirements 10, 15 years down the road and it helped bring Ben and Cass on. Um, so we chose robots, a uh, few reasons, but employees, huge issue over here, getting reliable employees and also empowering the next generation to come in and, and give them the technology and, and just, and they made the commitment to come on. So we move forward. So the robots is a huge part of that business. I want to very much sincerely thank Martin and Francina for that, uh, for that video. Um, it, it really is an amazing feat of engineering watching the A5s milk cows. It's always something I'm, I'm very much impressed by. The efficiency and accuracy in which this machine operates with is, is truly remarkable. Now with that said, that's not even the reason to purchase a Lely A5. When we discuss the future of the family owned and operated dairy farm, would we, we would be remiss not to talk about the data. The information that the A5 and T4C provide for the farm is essential to its long-term profitability and sustainability. Data like fat, protein, rumination, just to name a few, are unique to Lely and will help make your dairy, take your dairy farm into the future. As we discuss the latest and greatest in automated milking innovation, it is important to recognize that Lely has not only been working on the best way to milk a cow, but how best to feed her as well. This next segment is another reason why Lely and West Coast Robotics continue to be the market leader in farming innovation. Please welcome back Brian Rodenberg to discuss the Vector Feeding System. I'm proud to say that the Lely Vector is a viable, cost-effective way to feed your cows. And it is truly ready for the market. But it has not always been this way. <clears throat> the Lely Vector was released in April 23rd, 2012. In 2014, due to customer demand, West Coast Robotics decided it was time to bring this product to the BC market. We set to prepare ourselves for a new product in a different segment of the dairy industry. This was a super exciting new challenge. We moved one of our top milking technicians to the feeding department. We went to Germany to assist with an installation and we were ready, or so we thought. We installed five vector systems in 2015. And with the normal struggles of a new product, we spent countless hours on the farms tweaking, adjusting, and improving the installs of our systems. We soon realized the capacity of the vector and the reliability was not what we thought it would be. And then it happened. West Coast Robotics' biggest failure. With alarm calls too high and capacity too low, a vector was being taken out. I will always say that it's not whether you fail or not, it's about how well you fail. So we wrote a big check took back our vector and doubled down on ensuring low, lower running costs and a higher reliability on the farms that were still running. The decision was made to stop selling the units to anyone milking more than 60 cows. And through many software and hardware field validations, West Coast Robotics worked hand in hand with Lely North America and Lely International to bring us the product we have today. And after many trials and tribulations for both my technical team and our customers, Today, we have a system that is ready and working. I must thank the customers and my team for their patience and perseverance through these challenging times. In mid-2019, after a great year of success, we decided it was once again time to sell the Vector Automated Feeding Systems. With our first installation on a farm with more than 60 cows in five years running well, we're excited for what the future holds. So what has changed? Well. There's a new mixing and feeding robot, the MFR M2. It has a high speed auger, which has a helicopter mode, which allows you to properly clean out between mixes. 
Uh, it has a better quality mix with a new auger, a more powerful motor, and faster motor. With these things, we also reduce the mix times, which increases capacity. We have an improved bump ring with less maintenance and a complete stainless steel bin. Sensor brackets that are engineered to stay where they're supposed to be. Less labor for service, as the planetary can be removed from the top instead of taking out of the bottom. New self-sharpening knives and obstacle sensors allowing the unit to stop before it even runs into something. We have a new grabber. The new grabber has, has no maintenance. It has more than 10 times the grabbing power of the old grabber, which is, makes it better at pulling apart round bales and longer feed types. And it also reduces spillage in the kitchen, creating a cleaner kitchen. Also, because it's more powerful, it has to grab less often, which means it also increases capacity and decreases load times. Software is a plethora of changes. Communication alarms have been basically eliminated and a million small improvements mostly eliminating nuisance alarms where the farmer has to come out and just hit a button to get the machine to work again. A huge part of it is our overall experience. Both Lely and West Coast now have many years and many vectors running. Our, our experience is helping to decrease downtime, increase the quality of the mixing and the loading of the machine. This experience has also ensured that when starting a new farm, we can properly prepare and coach the farmer through the startup process. So I guess the real question is, why would you want a vector? Well, what sets it apart from other automated feeding options. One is it has the lowest install cost of any automated feeding system. There's no need for infrastructure in the barn such as rails and power strips because the feeding robot relies on our already proven technology in autonomous vehicles with the Juno feed pusher. The grabber. The grabber is a huge part. It allows flexibility in your kitchen. You can have many feed types. Often if you make a bad third cut the solution is dilution, which means you need another place for it. If you need a bin or a silo for each individual feed at twenty or forty thousand dollars a box or a silo, this is a substantial savings. I'm not saying there isn't a place for boxes as they increase the capacity, but they also increase the capital and the service costs of the machine. The vector, really what sets it apart more than anything, is its ability to feed to the need of the cows. Basically, the vector drives through your barn and it only feeds when the cows have eaten enough of what's already there. This results in a lot less feed waste. We often see on hot summer days where the vector will, will, will the feed the majority of its feed in the evening when it's cooler and feed almost nothing during the day because the cows aren't eating anything when it's hot out. The Vector gives you income over feed costs every day in combination with Laylee robot milking machines. And it gives you a daily overview of dry matter per cow. Why is a Vector better for the farmer? I think the biggest thing is the increased flexibility. There's no weekends as you can load your kitchen on Friday and not have to load it again till Monday. There's no set schedule of when you need to feed because the cows will run out. You just load the kitchen. There is way more data data every day and data that relates back to dollars. There's less labor. We see a minimum of 50% reduction in labor due to feeding chores. We also see many farmers increasing the number of loads they feed because we can now properly mix a smaller close-up load or heifer load. So why is it better for the cows? There's lots of research that shows feeding Fresh feed on a regular basis results in higher intakes, which will result in increased milk production. One of our clients topped the DHI production chart for his area for the first time in his life with a Lely Vector. We see about a kilogram of fat corrected milk per day increase in production over a conventional system with a feed pusher. The other big things are small batches. Small batches allows you to target heifer groups, which creates a better future milk cow for your dairy farm. Also, you can target your close-ups and dry cows, resulting in less metabolic issues post-calving and an overall better transition. For the milk cows, we see more consistent intake and less gorging. This increases rumen health, 
which results in higher fat per cow and a better preg rate, and also, once again, less metabolic issues. There's less competition at the bunk, which results in less injuries at the feed fence. There's a higher, the, the lower ranking cows have higher intakes because they don't have to fight for a spot at the feed fence all the time. And all of these things result in a healthier and more profitable cow. Why is it better for your bottom line? The biggest two things are less energy and less labor. The Vector only uses $1,200 worth of electricity per year. This is, this is over $5,000 in total savings. There's less refusals at the bunk due to the feed to the need, which is less feed waste. I always hear farmers say, it's not waste, I feed it to my heifers. Well, you could totally feed your heifers a much cheaper ration than one with cow grain in it. Also, the less forage we use, the less land we require, and we all know how expensive land here is in the Fraser Valley. There's less labor. You save about $10,000 in labor per year on 120 cow dairy. You have a much higher mix accuracy. You have improved cow health due to that, which equals money. I think a big thing with the mix accuracy is just think of it this way. You're using your loader tractor trying to feather in that next 50 pounds, whereas the Lely Vectors grabber can only take 50 pounds at a time. Just the fact that you're using a little shovel in a vector system versus a big shovel makes the system way more accurate. So what about the money? The capital costs of a vector, or of a tractor, sorry, of a conventional feeding system, basically you have $100,000 in your tractor, about $80,000 in your mixer, and $23,000 into a Juno feed pusher. This cost per month over 15 years at 4%, is about $1,500. The vector system will cost you about $250,000 for the machine, $50,000 for the kitchen, which will result in a $2,100 month monthly charge. Now you have your comparison of capital costs. As you can see, the vector is going to have a $600 premium over a conventional feeding system. What other things are there to consider? Well, at the end of the day, we have service costs. After polling a few of our customers and discussing some things with some dealers, we feel that the tractor will cost you about $4,000 a year in maintenance and service, the mixer wagon the same at $4,000, and a Juno is about $1,000. This results in a $750 a month service cost. The Vector will cost you $10,000 per month, or per year. <laughs> per month, that'd be nice. Um, $833 a month is the total vector cost. So basically when you compare the two things, the vector has a premium of $700 per month. So how are we going to offset these, these increased costs? Well, number one, let's talk about energy. Basically your tractor and mixer wagon is going to use about $6,500 worth of diesel fuel a year and your Juno feed pusher is going to use about $182 of electricity a year. This is $556 a month. Your vector system uses a total of $1,200 worth of electricity per year, which is $100 a month. Basically, if you compare those, we just saved $450 a month on energy using a Lely vector. Now we take the labor into consideration if you feed your cows two hours a day with a tractor and a mixer wagon, you're going to spend $18,000 a year on labor, and that comes to a cost of $1,500 a month. We see a minimum of 50% savings of labor on farms with a vector system, which is going to result in a savings of $760 per month in labor costs. So that gives us about $522 a month extra money in your jeans if you have a Lely Vector. And we haven't even talked about the biggest dollar savings yet, which is feed waste and the biggest improvements you can make, which is cow health. So at the end of the day, I think that the Vector system pays back even faster than robotic milking machines. Thank you very much for your time. And I will turn this back over to Mitch. Thanks, Brian, for uh, another very uh, informative uh, presentation. 
Uh, I'm I'm always impressed with uh, Brian's vast knowledge of all things related to dairy. Don't tell him I said that, but uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, Brian is always available to our customers and is truly the foundation of who we are at West Coast Robotics. Brian has done everything within our business at West Coast from service tech to on-call tech, farm management support, capital sales, uh, barn design, project management, obviously as general manager today and co-owner. If you are ever interested in hearing more about Brian's vast knowledge and experience, just ask him, he'll tell you. I once described this next Lely robot as a Roomba for a barn. This next robot and its presenter, well, they're both full of manure. Welcome back, Gray Prescott, to talk about the Lely Discovery 120. Yes, uh, thanks Mitch for that colorful introduction. What is the collector? The manure vacuum. <clears throat> manure Roomba, manure eater, Lely Discovery 120, or the Lely Collector. By any name, the Lely Discovery 120 is the most innovative solution for burn cleaning automation on the market today. This is a robot that autonomous, autonomously travels through the barn. It picks up manure, urine, and bedding left, in the, uh, left behind by the cows in the alleys and crossovers of the barn. This machine is simple to retrofit into most barns and provide savings when building a new barn around it. West Coast Robotics is proud to have 10 units running in British Columbia today on eight farms, including one farm on Vancouver Island. This, this machine provides a great way to convert former parlors, holding areas, and other spaces into clean cow housing. It's a simple way to automate manure cleaning done by tractor or hand today without much co construction costs. Laley now has four years of total experience with the collector and an install base of over 1,700 units globally. How does it work? The collector drives through the barn on pre-programmed routes. Different routes are used to clean certain sections of the barn more or less often. For instance, more often behind a stall bed and less often directly in front of the feed bunk. The unit is 48 inches wide, which means it's easy for cows to walk around it. A low profile allows the machine to easily drive under gates to access different pens. The manure tank is large enough to handle around 80 milking cows worth of manure cleaning most of the barn every two hours. Navigation. It uses ultrasound sensors, gyroscope, and encoders to navigate its way through the barn. The intelligent software helps the collector know where it is in the barn. This means that even if it encounters an, an obstacle, it will often find its way back to the charger. Water sprayers front and back are configurable for where it sprays water and how much. This machine achieves 45% drive time over a 24 hour period, which allows it to clean up to 5,000 square feet per collector. It runs on one 12 volt battery, which means that you only need a regular 120 volt outlet to supply power to your charger. There's a header tank included for water filling Simply provide a water supply to the float in the header tank and you're ready to go. The rubber squeegee that does the pushing and funnels manure into the tank is simple to replace when needed. And multiple collectors can be installed on the same farm or in the same barn and even share a dumping spot. So how is this machine different from conventional manure cleaning equipment? Well, I think first and foremost is there's no flume, no drop slots, or no cross channel. This represents a significant savings when looking at building new or retrofitting. There's no crossovers port hire, which means there's no step for the cow to make and no crossovers to be cleaned by hand. Weird shapes are possible, like L-shaped alleys 
or when you're converting things like old parlors with no other way to clean them into cow housing. Expansion is simple as there are no drop slots at the back of the barn to prevent uh, expansion. Small quantities of manure throughout the day mean reception pits can be smaller with smaller pumps. The collector can dump directly into underbarn storage or into a manure pit where allowable. Alternatively, a modest reception pit and 10 horsepower manure pump will allow the collector to be placed any, pretty much anywhere on the farm. No fixed infrastructure means that this product can be moved to another location if a barn is replaced or no longer used. And no extra space at the end of the barn for things like alley scraper drives and corner wheels. So what are the benefits? Well, benefits for farms of tractor cleaning today are pretty straightforward. You could save one hour per day and save $912 per month. With the total cost of the collector being $690 per month, including the purchase price and service costs. There's no manure wave because the robot is sucking up the manure as opposed to pushing it. This results in cleaner feet, leading to better hoof health and less manure being tracked into the freestalls. <clears throat> the machine is cow friendly. They can walk around it. So new heifers won't be chased to the end of the bat of the other uh, the end of the burn uh, by a scraper sled that they've never seen before. And cleaning the whole burn every two hours results in a cleaner environment, which is better for the cows and nicer for the people in the barn. Water sprayers prevent hardened manure buildup in the dry months. This results in better traction. There's no cables or chains to replace. The wear parts are minimal and can be changed by West Coast Robotics service technicians. We've seen uh, SCC numbers drop on one firm by 80,000 on average for the first full year after the installation of the collector. And I should point out this is versus twice a day cleaning with a tractor. So why should you consider one for your firm today? Well, save time on your firm today if you're a tractor cleaning currently. Do so with minimal changes to your current facilities. Leave your options open to move to a new facility or add on to your current one. Create a clean burn to have clean and healthy cows. Save money on the construction of a new barn and really move toward full automation with no more crossovers to shovel. A last note is that this machine opens up many options for modern barn design. The idea of barns being designed entirely around the manure system with parallel alleys and common drop slots is no longer required to have an automatically clean barn. And next up, we're gonna to move to a video highlighting another farm here in Chilliwack. Uh, Corners Pride Farm is the largest robotic milking firm in British Columbia. Uh, in spite of the size, this is still a family run operation. Justin Vandermeulen, who will, you will see in the video, runs this farm with his father, Bernie, and his business partner, Brandon. Uh, and here he is with his story. So uh, my name is Justin Vandermeulen. Uh, this is Cornish Pride Farms. We've uh, been here for over 50 years, or the dairy's been here for over 50 years now. Uh, I farm with my father and uh, partner, Brandon Bishop. Um, we're milking 1,650 cows on 29 Lely robots right now. Uh, production sits around 38 kgs. We sit around 1.1.6, just a little bit under kgs of fat per cow per day right now. Uh, the transition, uh, I guess, was interesting. I mean, we I was still we went from a double 16 pairing bone and then we converted to a double 25 in the same location, same parlor, and kept milking. So I remember that that was wild. 
Um, so this wasn't too bad, I guess, because we did it over, I think, eight, nine months. The construction of the new barns that behind us here and then the retrofits. Uh, so there was enough delay. It was You kind of got a chance to catch your breath and just transition the herd through it. So I didn't think it went too bad, actually. It was fun. Definitely by the last startup, it was, you were kind of sick of startups, that's for sure. We got pretty good at it after a while, but it was, you're definitely sick of it. But uh, I think to transition from the parlor itself, the cows did really good. The heifers always do a little bit better, but uh, in the end, we we didn't get rid of too many cows. So it went, uh, went really well on that end. Uh, I guess positives would be uh, more milk. I mean, we were doing really, really good in our parlor when we actually switched. We actually had our best three months we ever had had in that parlor, the three months before we did our uh, start, started swapping over. Um, so that was always interesting, but we're still higher production today. Like it's not even close. You look at kgs of fat per cow today, where we thought we were good in the parlor compared to now, like we're like way higher. Yeah, you see what the, the amount of data that the robots and T4C collect, I mean, with the rumination and eating time callers, I mean, it's just unbelievable. It almost could be too much at times. You can get focused too much on one thing, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, in the future, once it gets more, just they just get more big farm experience. And I think the more people that use it, and the more feedback they get, the better it'll be. So. Our one major goal is to always be improving. So I think that's Brian's goal too, is to always improve. Uh, so I would, I'd be lying if I said we've been easy on Brian through this whole experience. Uh, and not so much the robots. I mean, the robots do what they do. I mean, I think everyone knows that. They milk, they milk cows, they do a really good job of it. So it's more, uh, Figuring out, yeah, your labor, your efficiencies there, your maintenance costs, and your inputs and outputs, really. So, trying to hammer down what we can do better to, yeah, improve production, but improve robot downtime, or robot costs, feed costs. I think that's where West Coast has really been by our side, helping to improve. What advice? Uh, do your research, I guess. Um, Really think about what you're putting robots in for. Uh, if you're getting out of parlor or bad, or if you're just sick of farming and you think it's going to be good, I mean, it's not like the work goes away. I mean, you have the stress and the time of milking goes away, but it's not like there's not other jobs to get done. The jobs you get replaced with are better and more enjoyable, but it's still, uh, still farming still out there every day you got to do do your due diligence so it's not like you get to just put robots in and call her quits for the day go on vacations it's uh, it doesn't work that way so I would say do your research first but uh, definitely uh, yeah do your homework of uh, yeah what it costs you make sure you're feeding and you make sure you have the right nutritionist involved and that he has robot experience that uh, that's one thing I always find it's uh, we stuck with our nutritionist through it all, but uh, I've seen a lot of startups where they bounce around. It seems to go, go. Everyone has their different philosophy on how to feed cows through robots. It seems that uh, ours, we've tried stuff and it's worked and not worked. But yeah, definitely, if you're putting in, uh, if you decide to go with Layla and West Coast, uh, I guess the best advice would be to listen to you and Brian. They've done it a lot. They've had a lot of experience now, and uh, I think uh, you guys are no what works and what doesn't by now. So that would be my best advice. Thanks again to uh, Justin and family there for that uh, that awesome video. And and also thanks to Gray. I, I tease him, but truth be told, Gray is another experienced asset at West Coast Robotics. Gray grew up on a dairy farm out east in the Maritimes and his practical knowledge and experience are part of what makes West Coast unique in our ability to relate and understand the needs of our customers. 
For the next few minutes, we're going to take some questions from the audience. We thank you for those that have come in already. Our, our promo code is hashtag chocolate milk. So if you can enter that in the, in the, the uh, chat box below the video, where you can also send your questions. Again, next promo code is has hashtag chocolate milk. We're going to go to our first question here, which is for Brian. And Brian, how, lo uh, how long does it take to do the milking related chores on a two robot farm? Okay, so uh, two robot farm, generally speaking, when we talk about milking related chores, we would, we would be including cleaning crossovers, cleaning stalls, uh, fetching cows, and doing them the daily maintenance and cleaning on the robots. Um, and we would say that should take you around an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half a day. Okay. So, so the next question we have, uh, have coming in here uh, is going to go to Gray. Gray, how many cows uh, can be milked on a, a single A5 robot? Yeah, great question. And, and probably the most common question <clears throat> posed to me today. And I usually bring it back to kilograms of quota filled by the robot and the number i would say there would be 80 key <coughs> kgs per machine uh, and when i say that i'm trying to under promise and, and over deliver we do have machines filling in excess of 100 kilos per day but the reason that's a good number to work with as opposed to cow numbers is your milking time is going to depend on the production and milk speed of your cows obviously plus attachment time. So if you're milking more cows at a higher production or fewer cows at a lower production, um, it's really going to amount to how much milk you can get in the tank per day. And, and then what I would say is, is 80 kgs per robot is what I like to see it at. Awesome. So the questions just keep coming in here, which is awesome. Uh, our next question is, um, how does the uh, the vector feeding system uh, handle round bales? So I'll, I'll, we'll we'll give that one to Brian. Uh, so the vector feeding system with the grabber, uh, it's quite flexible, so it can handle round bales. Uh, it will struggle if you don't process your round bales in the field. So we always suggest cutting your feed in the field. Um, but we do have farms that uh, have round bales. I think actually all of our farms that currently use a vector have at least one round bale in their mix. And uh, yeah, they're all running successfully. So just make sure you cut that feed in the field. Mm -hmm. And so Gray, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this next one. How many, how many cows can the vector feed per day, in including milk cows, heifers, dry cows, close-ups, et cetera? Yeah. Another good question. And I guess the quick answer to that would be 180 milking cows along with all the associated uh, young stock and, and dry cows for that number. Um, now I should point out that something like an extremely long route that the machine has to drive or if you have a high amount of long forages that are going to require more mixing time, uh, that can decrease the number. Uh, but there are also things like feeding out of a tower silo or a commodity box, which can help uh, decrease the loading time and increase capacity. So I guess what I'd say is, is somewhere around that 180 cow mark for a one wagon system would be the number. However, adding multiple mixing and feeding robots to a system can allow you to go um, much larger than that. So this, this next question is, is kind of a, a two-part question. Um, so I'm going to give the first part of this question to Gray, and then I'll give the second part of the question to Brian. So Gray, the first, first part is, um, what's the, what are the main differences between the A4 and the A5? And then Brian, are A5 service costs similar to the A4 service costs, or do you see some changes in there? Okay, so the first question, part of the question being about the differences between the A4 and the A5. The, the similarities between the two are their shape. So obviously from the cow's perspective, not a lot has changed. The box is the same and 
what the arm, the portion of the arm underneath the cow is, is pretty much the same. However, everything else from the arm to the milk pump to all the computer boards, wires and connectors are all entirely different. So it really is that shape and everything on the, from the cow's perspective has remained the same and that's about it. Everything else is different on the two machines. Although it's not evident if you were to look at the two, when you, when you dive under the skin, you see that it's actually a whole new machine uh, from the ground up. Awesome. Yeah, and I think a, another big difference, one big difference for the cow is definitely the noise. Um, the, the silent arm certainly makes a difference in how fast heifers learn. So that's a big improvement for us. As far as service cost goes, we see that there's going to be a 10% reduction in chemical and consumable costs. Um, and we, we're estimating there should be a 10 to 15% reduction in service costs at this point in time. So currently it looks very promising that this is true. And obviously when Gray talks about um, the $1,100 a month total running costs, that's, that's taking some of those uh, considerations into place that there should be a reduction in these in these costs so we're we're thinking you're going to see 10 to 15 percent in overall in overall costs mitch awesome so we, we are getting pressed for time so i'm gonna i'm gonna go with one last question here uh what are some key things to consider when choosing a layout for your robot facility so i'll give that one to brian um i would say uh <clears throat> Um, cow flow is a big one, big crossovers, uh, people flow is another one. Um, that's also something to consider. Obviously manure, manure management, how you're going to deal with that is big. I think, um, things we really believe in obviously are free flow cow traffic. We see there's a huge advantage in that as far as profitability of the dairy farm, um, how you're going to foot bath. How much are you gonna sort? What are you gonna sort for? And again, that's another spot where we really think people need to look at sorting and make those decisions a little bit beforehand. Kind of the less you're in the general population, the less you're actually disrupting the cows and the better it works. So really at the end of the day, foot bathing, sorting, big spaces, cow flow, people flow, and how you're gonna hoof trim your cows. I would say those are the biggest things to look at. Awesome. Well, well, thanks so much, everybody, for all your participation here. This has been this is this is great, and we are going to have another opportunity for questions shortly. Uh, however, we do, for the sake of time, have to move on. Um, we are very fortunate today to be joined by Lely North America's own Mr. Tony Brazda. Tony joins us uh, all the way from the Greater Napanee, Ontario era area sorry and tony's going to let us in on what's new with Laylee and uh, look at the economics on parlors versus robots so welcome tony first of all thank you very much for the opportunity to, to, to come out and speak uh, any uh, people familiar with indigenous languages know napani is the algonquin word for crappy internet reception so apologies ahead of time for for any quality issues of this particular video or video feed um, Lely is an exciting company to work for. Uh, we have over 3,000 robots running in Canada now, which is uh, pretty exciting to, to just sort of hit that milestone of the 3,000 mark, and over 5,000 running in North America, uh, with over 40,000 running worldwide. Uh, we're more than just uh, robots uh, for milking. Uh, the vector feeding system has announced a few new updates to as well, a uh, higher speed auger uh, for better uh, capacity, a better unload a more reliable closing mechanism on the vector grabbers. There's a few new things coming out on the feed systems uh, this year, uh, as well as probably one of the, uh, the, we come up with a new computer platform that we're running on. Uh, Lately Horizon is what it is. It's a cloud-based platform. Uh, realistically, our, our innovations have really, uh, and data that we can generate have gone beyond the typical black box that we have sitting on a desk somewhere. And we could use a little bit more computing power and the most effective way of getting to that computing power, of course, is, is the cloud. So we have a new cloud-based system, which lets us look at a lot, of, uh, a lot more data, make a lot better decisions off of uh, a lot of uh, information that the system can generate. Uh, the idea is, in the end, make decisions simpler, uh, better informed, um, and more data-based, not gut feel-based uh, decisions uh, coming up with Lately Horizon. Uh, then with no further ado, we'll step into 
uh, comparing the cost of this wonderful technology and is it cost competitive with Parvis? So let's look at a scenario. Uh, what I wanted to start off with was just a very uh, quick discussion comparing robots and parlors and the economies of both. Um, so what I want to look at then is a, is a few things. We'll take a, a very common example. So if we look at an average uh, herd size in, in British Columbia, uh, we're looking at uh, about 150 cows. Would that be a fair number to use? Hundred fifty cows. Uh, currently looking in a double ten uh, parlor. Parlor. Uh, if we were looking at say three robots plus some some other equipment associated with that to, to get that up and going uh, to milk the hundred and fifty cows, we'd have to purchase three robots. That would be somewhere in around that seven hundred thousand dollar mark. Uh, the robots themselves would be a little bit under that. Uh, but we'd have to add some other equipment to, to make it all work. Uh, let's see, so that's for three robots. And uh, interest rates, currently they're extraordinarily low, uh, record low, realistically speaking, uh, but we're probably looking at a, a, an ownership cost of somewhere around uh, 3% um, uh, on money right, right now, interest rates. And uh, I'm going to use for this example labor uh, at uh, $20 an hour. Okay, so let's start with a few things, and we'll we'll work our way in uh, this this example based on these facts. I'll set that off to the side, and, and let's go. So, when we're looking at the economics, we want to know operational costs. We want to know ownership costs and we want to know labor. Those are basically our three main factors. So uh, to start with, we'll start with robots. So we said $700,000 by the robots. How long are they good for? Well, we really haven't worn one out yet. So it's really hard to say how long would uh, a robot last. Uh, very comfortable at saying 15 years. If we want to say, okay, what's it cost every month then to own a piece of equipment that costs me seven hundred thousand uh, dollars over that that time frame? What I would probably look at is just using a mortgage mortgage calculator at three percent interest, is what we talked about here, um, seven hundred thousand at three percent. So um, go to kind of any of the the, the apps that you, you want to go with. Uh, that's a hundred percent fine and. Um, and typically I use a, an FCC calculator and give me a section here. So if I looked at a monthly payment on $700,000 at 3% interest for 15 years, that's gonna cost me 4,000 uh, $827 and 82 cents a month. Now I'm not saying you should finance them over this period of time. If I finance them over a shorter period of time, I'm building equity and then I'd have to bring that all back into calculation. But basically that's about what it costs. So to, owner, to own the ownership costs on robots would be uh, for about just over $4,800 a month at 3% interest for that $700,000. If I look at operational costs, what's it cost to run an A5 robot? What's the all-in cost per robot per month? Uh, we can get some exact figures. I'm gonna go a little bit on the high side here and say $1,000 a robot a month. Okay, three robots. So operational costs would be this number times three robots. And the math is so easy, I could do it without a calculator and say $3,000 a month to operate. 
Now, some months are going to be lower, some months are going to be higher. It all depends on what's going on on the farm at that particular time. So we're going to have a lot of lower months. We're going to have the odd month that's a, a extraordinarily higher, depending on what's happening. That's a pretty good long-term average, it's a pretty conservative long-term average for what we would see in A5 running. Now, now we need to know labor. How long does it take to look after three robots and fetch all the cows? like you would do in a, in a parlor. So in a parlor, you go, you fetch all the cows, you milk them, you put them all back. Uh, what's the equivalent length of time that it takes to do that? In a parlor, you have to set up and clean up. Uh, what's it take to do that in a robot too as well? So now we look at labor to run three robots. When we start looking at what does it take, there's, a, there's about 10 minutes a day in terms of maintenance, uh, cleanup and daily maintenance and checks you have to do on the, the robots per robot, we start looking at some fetching routines and we start asking, especially larger farmers, because they tend not to multitask uh, when doing routines. Uh, a lot of people milking 150 cows will also be checking animals at peak or ventilation settings or something else along the way while, while they're doing their fetching routines. But if you send someone out just with the sole purpose of how long does it take to, to fetch cows, you've got about 10 minutes a day of, of, uh, of maintenance um, and then a couple fetches a day uh, per, per robot that we'd be looking at. Usually it takes a little bit longer, maybe in the morning where there might be a few more cows on the list, a little shorter in the evening where there's a few less. But when we study this, it comes out to about all of the robot maintenance, fetching and maintenance works out to a total of about 37 uh, minutes per robot per day of just the task. So we're not getting any cows bred, we're not doing anything else that way. All we're doing at this point in time is fetching cows and the, the robot maintenance to get the milk done. So if I look at 37 minutes times um, three, okay? So we, got, we have three robots times three robots. That's 111 minutes. per robot per day. So it's 1.85 hours a day times, we said 20 an hour. So what's that equal? So $37 a day in labor times how many days in a month? 30.4 days per month. And then our total is 1,124.80 per month. Okay. We'll come back and total that up in just a minute. Now, we're milking 150 cows in the parlor. So, uh, double 10, two people in it, how many turns per hour are we looking at typically? Um, so, in a, in a two by 10 parlor, and uh, I'm gonna back up a bit. Let's start with ownership costs because that's the way I started before. Uh, ownership, what's it gonna be? Well, I already own that parlor, so I'm gonna say it's zero dollars. Okay. Uh, operational costs. Is how much? So we start looking at what's it cost to operate a parlor. Uh, done some studies on this. Some of our uh, dealers also sell parlors too as well. So we've done some, some numbers. The numbers we could verify are a low of 11 cents per cow per milking to a high of 31 cents per cow per milking. Per cow per milking. What does this include? Well, this includes all operational costs. So teak dips, soaps, acids, uh, liners, 
breakdowns, emergency repairs, scheduled maintenance, all of those things all lumped into one. We said it was $1,000 per robot per month. This is anywhere from 11 to 31 cents per cow per milking. So things that can affect these ranges, uh, quality of tea dip breakdowns. This, this guy had no breakdowns in a given year that we looked at. This guy had a few breakdowns, an air compressor or something like that, calves and vacuum pumps, so all of those things that this happened. What I'm going to use for a number, and it was presented at uh, by a guy who did all of this and then presented at the World Dairy Expo, Expo Brian Hoyan, and he said it was $17.34 uh, per cow per month is what this cost him to, to run. So if we do the math on that and look at um, 1734 uh, times 150 cows, so that works out to 2,601 uh, um, per month. So ownership was zero, operational was just over 2,600 per month, and now we're into labor. So turns per hour in a parlor. Um, when you ask most farmers, uh, they'll say, how many turns per hour can I get out of a, a parlor? Most people say, well, I'm running at five, and, and very few people actually hit five. Uh, a lot are closer to three than the R5. Uh, the average in Ontario, and I know people in BC are better workers and harder working than the uh, average Ontario are, um, but the average in Ontario is somewhere around 3.7 uh, turns per hour. Uh, in this case, we'll, we'll say four. I hope that's a fair number. I mean, the changes, I'm gonna say the part is doing four turns per hour. Turns per hour. And that's, so we have, uh, do the math on that, we have two times 10, so 20 cows times four turns an hour, and that equals uh, 80 cows per hour. All right, and if we take 150 divided by 80, so we're saying uh, that takes 1875 hours to milk those cows and we had we're saying this is two people is, is running that so times two okay so that equals 3.75 hours to milk okay so we have that that's the milking time and then if we have to set up the parlor so it's 5 a.m two people show up for the first milking of the day how long does it take them to, what do they do? They punch in first, put the coffee pot on, swing the pipeline, pull all the things out of the jetter. How long does it take two people to set up? Uh, best answer I've ever heard from this, this question is one guy, 15 minutes, two guys take half an hour. Uh, so a lot more chatter goes back and forth when you start adding people uh, to the whole, whole deal. So setup, I'm gonna say takes a quarter hour, okay? So we're gonna say, one quarter hour to set up, okay, times two people. So I gotta pay a half hour in wages. Hours, and then there's cleanup that has to go on. So how long does it take? We're all done milking. Now we gotta clean the parlor. We gotta hose down the parlor. We gotta clean the holding area. Uh, we have to put everything back into jetters. We have to swing the pipe around, pull the filter out, all of those other things. Uh, Two people, half an hour, is that enough time? It really depends on a, a few parameters and, and cleanliness. Um, I'm gonna say two people, half an hour, or one person in a full hour to get this done. I'm gonna add another hour worth of, of, uh, of labor into this. So now if I total this all up, uh, that comes out to five and a quarter hours. Okay, per milking. So, I have uh, 5.25 times $20 an hour, okay, and that equals 525 times 20 an hour, we got 105 a milking, per milking, okay, and I'm going to go times three times a day. 
So three milkings a day. So we get similar numbers to output as the robots would do. And we got 105 times three. So that's 315 a day, $315 a day times 30.4 days per month. And bottom line on this is That works out to $9,576 per month in labor. Okay, so let's, uh, let's summarize. Let's, uh, let's just summarize everything that, that we were at. So, we had a partner. And we had a robot. And uh, we looked at uh, ownership. We have operational. Our operational costs and our labor. All right, so summarizing to the nearest $100. I'm gonna round up or round down to the nearest $100 just to make the math easy so I, I don't screw up. No one's ever complimented me on either my printing my writing or my math. So ownership on the partner was $0. And on the robot, it cost us uh, $4,900 a month. Okay, this is monthly cost. Operational costs here, we'll, uh, we'll round it down to $2,600 is what it cost. And in the robots, a little bit more, and we're saying $3,000 here. Okay, labor is a uh, place where we're going to see a difference here. Labor for 3x uh, on the situation that we're saying, 150,000 to a double 10, we're saying 9,500 a month. And on the robots, we're saying uh, down to 1,100 a month. So if we total this up, uh, we're at uh, uh, 13. 12,000, sorry, 12,000, is that correct? Yeah, $12,100. And when we're uh, adding this one up, we're at $9,000. So in this case here, we have a, a favorable balance on the robot side of $3,100 a month cheaper than using the existing part of that's already fully depreciated away. So on this, then, I do want to say that this is the type of results that we expect all the time. It surprises a lot of people, but at the end of the day, automation takes off because automation pays. Uh, no factory says, boy, I wish I could go out and weld this by hand now, because hand welding would increase my cost, increase my variability, reduce my quality. Automation wins because automation is simply cheaper and the better route to go. And that includes in, in robotic numbers too as well. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present this. Uh, happy to field any questions as they come, as they arise. Take care. The numbers don't lie, folks. The truth is, is always in the math. Thanks, Tony, for that uh, segment on robot economics. Uh, it's always so cool to see what Laley is working on next. At West Coast, we feel very strongly that Laley is the leader in farming innovation. And I think after hearing from Tony about what Laley sees for future farms, uh, many would have to agree. Uh, as you can see, Laley is now taking the next steps to innovate in the fields as, as well as in the barns. And speaking of barns, our next guest is one of our greatest assets here at West Coast Robotics. He is our resident expert on T4C and our cowman extraordinaire. He is West Coast Robotics Farm, Man Special, Farm Management Specialist and everyone's favorite Frenchman, Mr. Denis Langlois. Well, uh, thanks, Mitch. Um, sure is nice to be alone in that category. Uh, let's keep it that way. <laughs> so um, my outline for today, uh, we're going to talk about FMS, and that stands for Farm Management Support. 
Um, and what that means, you're going to hear, hear it a lot from our sales team and uh, from everyone at West Coast Robotics. So I'm going to go into what that means for you and your farm. Um, I have a background in, uh, in the feed industry. I, I worked in the feed industry in Quebec and Ontario for eight years. So we're going to just quickly go over what uh, the feed cost is and a study that was done a couple years ago uh, on robotic farming. Um, and then we're going to look at monitor, monitoring cow performance and management and what that looks like uh, and tying the two in uh, together. And then we're going to look at t for c and what, uh, what it's going to look like in the future, uh, which is uh, Horizon actually. So we're going to look at that and, uh, and, and transferring what you see on the computer into app and mobile solutions uh, while you're in the barn on your day-to-day -day task. Um, so this is a study by Penn State University that was done in 2017. Um, as you can see on the graph here, it compares uh, conventional uh, dairy farming with robotic farming uh, and the different types of uh, this different ways to feed. Uh, conventional um, has both parlor and tie stall uh, included in there. And as you can see, uh, there's quite a big spread. And, and the main message here is really uh, there's a misconception with, dairy, with uh, robotic farming that it, it's more expensive. And as you can see right here, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, and you can see the link here. That's the study. You can have a look, a deeper look into uh, on uh, Penn State University's website. Uh, but basically, the, what they came out with was it was 550 uh, per cow per day for robotic farms versus 564 on non-robotic non uh, milking farms. And production was uh, about 35, just over 35 kgs for robotic farms versus 33 uh, for non-robotic uh, farms. So um, just uh, just wanted to go over that and, and cover that uh, little bit of misconception regarding feeding in the robots. Um, so. Uh, what, what, like you bought robots and now what? Those robots give you a lot of values, a lot of uh, uh, different data points, 120 different values per cow per day. Um, so what do you do with that? And that's when, that's what uh, farm management is all about. That's where I come in, uh, basically after, a little bit before startup and after. And farm management is really optimizing uh, the robot and bridging the gap between what you see on what the information gives you on the robot uh, on the, on your computer and uh, what you see in the farm. So bring, bringing the two together to reach your goals. Um, some of the information that you get on there is uh, rumination, activity and rumination every two hours. Uh, you get feed intake uh, every day or every milking and you get rest feed um, per day. You also get uh, their, their body weight every visit um, and then a whole bunch of uh, different data points and, and uh, values uh, that you can analyze every day. I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm going to focus on rumination, somatic cell count and, uh, and weight, uh, weight scale. And what, what that gives you uh, uh, when you use those, those uh, values. So first, uh, we're going to look at the health report. Uh, the health report basically combines all the, uh, the information, the features that you, you have from your robot, depending what options uh, you buy. Uh, that report's going to be more and more accurate. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, based on, on that report, uh, as you can see, we have a different sick, sick chance, and we can uh, route cows based on that to the attention pen and have that cow routed to the right place uh, when you need her. So not have to disturb the whole cow. Um, and depending on a farm, that might be, that threshold might be 40% sick chance or 60% when you want to see them, uh, but that can really be customized. So uh, a good example here on, on the table, you see uh, that bottom, that cow at the bottom of the table uh, says 10% sick chance. And you can see that cow is three, three days uh, fresh. Um, so she doesn't really have a good uh, rumination average, not a relevant one anyway. So we're not really taking that into consideration in the sick chance calculation. So um, it's nice to have 
uh, a report like that that combines all the all the data point but it's also nice to be able to dig into uh, one specific uh, data point in and see what what's going on with different cows so so you have the health report that combines it all together but then we can look at a rumination report um, where for example again that cow that was 10 percent sick sick chance uh, well, if we look at the rumination report, we can see that she's dropping uh, rumination real quick. So it's, uh, it, it might be a good uh, opportunity to either route her uh, to the back of the robot or, um, or go see her in the barn and see, uh, see what's going on. Next is a somatic cell counter. Um, we all know that mastitis is very costly on, on dairy farms. Um, I don't have to tell you this. Uh, but a, a, another misconception, I guess, is, uh, is that conductivity is a good measure of uh, finding out which cow has mastitis. And that is that can be true sometimes, but it's not necessarily true uh, all the time, depending on which can, kind of mastitis we're dealing with. So here's a good example on the graph uh, you have on the screen now. Um, the four lines in the middle is, um, is conductivity, con conductivity for each quarter. Uh, you can see the left rear quarter has three points. The, the dots are all attentions. Um, so the three points that you see is when she would have been flagged for conductivity. Um, but then after that, it levels out and is kind of even with the other quarter. So you wouldn't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with that cow. Um, so you wouldn't do anything. If you didn't have an SCC counter, a somatic cell counter, which is the blue line that you see, um, then you wouldn't necessarily have spotted that cow um, and you can see that cow is going from 200,000 to 2.5 million uh, so it's quite a big jump and that graph is very typical of uh, staph aureus um, mastitis uh, this is something that I commonly see on on multiple farms and uh, being able to see this it's it's a it gives you a lot of value to be able to take this and be like okay maybe we should sample that cow uh, get her cultured and uh, uh, ask the vet to get get a culture on her and see if we're actually dealing with somatic cell um, staph aureus or another different type of mastitis. Uh, report 19 is a heat probability report. Um, I'm not going to dive too much into into the heat probability. Um, all I'm going to say is really uh, the, the, the report gives you, uh, uh, based on uh, the rumination and activity information, it's going to give you a, a chance of heat or a level of heat probability that she's in. And it's going to give you the little bar graph that you see there uh, for optimum insemination moment. Um, but, and again, um, everything that I'm talking about, we can route cows to the separation area and really have the right cows at the right time that you need to deal with. Um, but really what I want to focus on here is, is the health remark. You can see on, on the table there, in, in the last column, uh, it says kgs. Uh, and that's really like Ben Marhai said in the video earlier, is to point out that this cow is in heat, but uh, she's losing weight. So um, maybe it's a good idea to either, if you still want to breed her, but it's a good idea to maybe have a look look at her and see how much body weight is she losing and is it worth um, my time to and my money to, to breed her right now. Next uh, we have here um, the, the apps. Uh, the apps are very useful uh, when you're looking at, uh, at cows in the barn and trying to see uh, if you know you have five cows in the separation pen. Uh, why are they there? What do I need to do with this, these cows? Why did they get routed? Um, that's one aspect, but also if you're walking around the barn and you see a cow that maybe um, is limping or, uh, or is in heat, uh, you can right away look at your phone and see uh, the cow's uh, information, her last milk visits, uh, her last conductivity, if she was a failure. Uh, there's a whole ton of information you can see right from your phone. Um, and over here, if we look from uh, left to right, uh, the first, the first uh, screenshot that I took here, uh, it basically shows you that you can click on it and see what, which, route, which cows were routed. And then you can expand on it if you look at the second, second uh, screenshot. It's showing you each cow that's in that pen and why they're there. 
uh, based on the filters that we uh, we built that I or that I built with you and customize on your farm. Uh, we can see uh, some cows are there for uh, heat heat uh, probability. Some some of them are there for a sick chance. Some of their some of them are there for the vet to have a look at. So we can really customize that. And then if you need to, uh, you can uh, again click on the specific cow and expand as to why is she on there. Um, really see like this cow is on there for a sick chance. Well, what what's making her? high on the sick chance and then if you need to again if you want to enter a treatment right there uh, you can click on her go straight to her cow card and enter the information you need to right then and there you don't have to walk back to the office and uh and and do your management there you can do it right there in the barn so that's that's really an awesome tool to to have so in the future um for those that maybe don't have robots yet uh, you're not going to see a transition between the two, uh, but right here on your screen, you, you can see uh, there's a, a screenshot of what uh, T for C, uh, which is going to be called Horizon. This is what it's going to be looking like. So um, it's in a way very similar to what T for C looks like, but in other ways, uh, very different. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a new, uh, a new, um, uh, new clothing on T4C, basically, it's a, it's a fresh look, uh, it, it's really nice. Um, and then uh, moving that to the app as well, um, if we can move on here, the, the app is very similar to what the, what the desk, desktop is going to look like. You saw a screenshot of the previous or the current app, uh, but this is a screenshot of uh, the, 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 what that's going to look like in a few months uh, when Horizon is released. Um, so it's kind of nice to, to be able to seamlessly transition between uh, what you see on your desktop and your app and uh, being able to do the same thing on, on both ends. Um, Horizon has a bunch of new features that, that's coming out as well. Um, some of them here are listed. Uh, margin per cow is one that's that's coming out. That's going to be really nice, where you can put in uh, your uh, your um, uh, price for for milk, price for components, and the cost of your uh, PMR, and that will give you a margin per cow uh, depending on how much milk she eats. And figuring out if you have a vector, obviously that's going to be more accurate. Uh, but otherwise it's going to use your average numbers uh, for, for feed intake in terms of PMR and then her feed intake for, for uh, robot grain intake. Uh, but that's, that's going to give you really um, um, a good tool to see if, uh, I know every farm has that, their favorite cow they want to keep uh, no matter what, but that's going to give you a good tool to see uh, is it worth spending the money on that cow or uh, am I okay to keep her or, or, or should we... Uh, should we do something else with her? <laughs> so um, the next, the next one, the next three are advices that are going to come in in the app in the in the desktop, basically, and they're really going to look at different metrics. And this is where uh, making the most out of of this is having all the features and options that the robots are offering. So when you're looking at buying a robot, um, it, it's 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 in your best interest anyways, in my opinion, to have all, all the features and all the options you can have uh, to make these tools also more accurate and better for you. Uh, so the failure reduction advice is gonna take some history of the cow. Uh, if she's failing and why she's failing, it's gonna take the measurements of, of uh, uh, what it sees on, on the cow when it goes to attach her and basically recommend you maybe she should be singed or maybe she should be on a two time a day uh, milk access. There's a few things that might suggest you, and if whether you um, you accept that advice and do something with it or not, uh, those advice are going to get better. It's a little bit like um, you know you like a, a, a video on YouTube. It's going to suggest you more more videos like that. That's the same thing with those advice. They're going to get better as you use them. The next one, ketosis advice. Um, Again, uh, going back to the feature, if you have a weigh scale, uh, that's going to be even better because it's going to know if that cow is losing body condition or weight. Uh, so it's going to tell you, you know, maybe that cow has ketosis. Would you like to treat her? Would you like to maybe give her some uh, extra grain? Would you like to give her glycol? Uh, if, if you have that on farm, um, there's a couple of advice that might suggest you. 
And the same with keeping open, uh, keep open advice as we looked at earlier. Um, it's going to look at, yes, if, uh, if um, maybe she's losing body weight, uh, but also uh, previous record, that one doesn't work on first, first, cal first calvings, uh, first, first heifers, first calf heifers. Uh, but based on her his history, if you've bet her many times or and whatnot, it, it's going to give you uh, uh, if she's in heat, but actually maybe you should keep her open and, uh, and not rebreed that cow. Um, the last one that's going to come in in Horizon, uh, and there's going to be more development in the future, but uh, the pretreatment optimizer. So that's a really nice feature as well where it's going to measure... Uh, when when that cow maybe doesn't have as good of a milk letdown or milk flow and it's going to go like actually this cow you know she takes a good 20 seconds to let her milk down uh, maybe we should have more pre-treatment time so I know there's a lot of talk when you're buying a robot how fast can an attacher um, how fast uh, can we get get the cups on her but actually maybe on some cows it's better to wait and have a better pre-treatment um, so that's going to do it on its own and it's going to measure uh, uh, each cow individually their milk let down and see does she need more pretreatment. So this is uh, uh, really cool tools that are coming uh, with Horizon in the very near future. Um, uh, to end with, uh, just a quick look at what the margin per cow is going to look like here. Um, this is a graph of, uh, of a cow and it, it's going to show you what her margin per cow was in the last six months. And based on her pregnancy status, production, um, and uh, when she's gonna go dry and freshen, it's gonna show you in the next six months what you can expect for that cow or what it anticipates uh, that cow to be in terms of margin per cow. So uh, that's it for me for today, but we're gonna move on to Colbert Farm. Uh, this is a farm right here in Agassiz that uh, started uh, right now just about a year ago. And uh, it's really exciting uh, stuff going on on that farm. Uh, uh, Peter, son, and uh, um, uh, Gordon uh, Ruby are going to tell their story here. So I'll, I'll uh, uh, let it let let them tell their story. Peterson's first bought this place in November 43, so uh, my grandfather came out from the prairies and, uh, and dad uh, took over, I guess, in the mid-50s, and I've been here for 60 years now, I guess, too, so. Well, I'm Ruby, I'm Gord's wife, we've been married for, I guess, 31 years, and when I married him, there was still a few Guernseys, and slowly they got... They bred themselves off the farm, basically, is what happened. And Come we, on, you just like both teeth better. Well, that too. Well, we, st uh, we had a Juno before the fire. Oh, seven or eight years or whatever, we've had a Juno, and it worked real well. Uh, as far as the robots, that's the, it was their decision. I was a hands-on parlor guy. We had a nice parlor. I was fine with the parlor. I was one on the fence about which color to go between red or blue. And when they took me out to look at the new A5s, I was actually very impressed with, with what they could do and how they were working. So I came back and I was I was ready to, to side with mom on this one. The switch to the robots has been really easy. It was, the transition was, was very good. We, you know, I was all concerned about what issues we were gonna have, we never knew. But uh, the switch over to, uh, from the parlor down the road to the robots here went, went very good. West Coast support that. was great. We yeah. thought it. Uh, Absolutely. No, no complaints, complaints there. there. Anytime we had an issue. I will uh, add mm -hmm. on to what Dad said and say if you are sitting on that bubble of however many robots, thinking about adding the extra one, just do it. It takes so much stress off your time, and like you said on startup days, just so much easier. You don't have to push 50% or 60% of, of, of a full robot through because you can split that load between your robots. Uh, yeah, you, you always worry about the problems or what what could go wrong, And uh, but we had lots of help the first, uh, for the first few days, and uh, and after that, the cows learned. Yeah, I'd that's go, are handy. I'd go on even farther to say that I wasn't worried about the robots. I've seen what they can do, and I know that what they can do. 
I was more worried about him transitioning to the computerized <laughs> aspect of things. My time. I didn't. I didn't have to be there at certain times, and I've been very regimented my whole life. This is what I do right now and now, and it was like you've sort of felt lost for a while. What? You know, I don't have to be out there at this time. I. That that was that was and probably the bigger challenge the biggest, for me. Yeah. Right. Once we got the cows going, and okay, they're doing their thing, and calves are fed, and cows are fed. It's like, we don't have to be down there, you know, for all his life, four o'clock, that was chores time, you know, 5.30, that was milking time, those are the numbers that you revolve around, and you don't have to do that anymore, it's kind of like, okay. We've been up to just about three and a half milkings a day, and the cows have been milking really well, so I, that, that's one of the things that has probably been a bigger benefit to us and the cows, in that, that the extra milking. Just, you know, because we'd have never done that. I'd have never done three times a day. That's, that's just. Now your shoulders wouldn't have let you do that. So, I mean, uh, oh, it's nice having all the information there. I can get up and see, okay, yeah, this is what they're averaging or whatever and go from there. Or, you know. uh, West Coast has been a great, you guys are a, a great support team. You're, you're here for all kinds of ideas. We really appreciate you being able to come and sit down with us and showing us, you know, like, okay, these are the things this thing is capable of doing. We have purchased quota and we haven't added cows. So, you know, that uh, we've got lots of room here to expand if we so, so desire to do that. And, uh, and lots of robot space to do so. Now, we've got pretty good genetics here. They, We've been trying to do a good job there. and. And right now with the new barn, they have lots of space, and that's that's huge as far as as getting cows to if they're comfortable and have lots of space. Yeah. And, and the feed's been good, so we can't uh, give all the credit to West. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. We had a little part in it. <laughs> yeah. That that was part of a recommendation when we started this whole process from. Uh, the brass at the west coast, you know, build bigger so that you have space to grow. You don't know what the what's going to happen in the future, but maybe their idea wasn't as much for having cows having more space to milk better. But you got options then. And as far as a startup, having that second row, well, I'll say that again, was just huge. It made the startup so much easier. Anyone that gives you horror stories that, oh yeah, transitioning your cows from a parlor to robots, you know, they're just giving you horror stories because they want to. It's not there, as bad there as There could be horror age. stories out there, but there's way more stories, I'm sure, like ours. The amount of people that have come on in the farm, lots of people, they're all interested. they like, they all knew about the fire and all, how are you doing and blah, blah, how are the cows? I said, well, come on in and have a look. And they are absolutely blown away. They can't believe it. Like, wow, cows are getting milk like that. And it's, like, and it's word of mouth, right? And for the consumers, for the general public, they need to see that, look, we're treating our animals better than we treat ourselves to a large degree. You know, and it's, it's huge for us. And it makes them feel good, makes us feel good. want to thank the Petersons for sharing their story. I, I also wanted to uh, compliment uh, Gord there on his blue jacket. I guess with, with Christmas coming up, we'll have to make sure we get him a nice red one. Uh, merci beaucoup uh, to Denis as well. Uh, Denis' knowledge base and expertise is a tool for all Laley farms to utilize. Uh, when you purchase robots from West Coast Robotics, you receive many, many hours of Denis' time as part of your startup package. Denis will help ensure a smooth transition for you and your cows as you begin your new journey in automated milking. As we get close to wrapping up here, I would like to open the floor uh, to our audience once again for another uh, opportunity for questions. I will also say the next promo code is hashtag COVID Christmas. Hashtag COVID Christmas. Let's go back to the chat box here. 
So the first question is going to be for Brian. Uh, we have not yet talked uh, about the Juno. Brian, can you talk to us a little bit about how the Juno pays? Uh, the Juno actually is our fastest payback product. Um, you can lease a Juno for approximately $15 a day. Um, if you're pushing your feet up enough times, we've found actually by using the Juno, <clears throat> feeding, pushing your feet up eight times a day at equal intervals maximizes uh, the intake of the cows. Even if you're pushing feet up five times a day, the cost of labor pushing feet up five times a day is more than $15 a day. And if you're not pushing your feet up five times a day, you're leaving milk on the table. And when you're leaving milk on the table, um, any milk increase pays for a lot of things very quickly. So that's how a Juno pays. Awesome. Uh, so our next question here uh, is gonna be for Denis. Uh, what advice do you have for new robot farms as it pertains to training heifers in robots? Uh, training heifers, I mean, um, on training day, it's, uh, it's like any other cow. Uh, but after your startup, uh, a, a good way that we've found to train heifers and has a lot of success, there's multiple farms that, uh, that will put the, the heifers in the training mode, training mode that we call. Um, so what that does is you can put the cows, the animals in the robot uh, before they're actually allowed to milk and it will let them get a little bit of grain um, so they get used to putting their head down in the trough and eating a bit of grain. And um, the robot's gonna move the robot arm and make every noise every noise that it would as if it was milking the animal. So the, the heifer gets really used to those sounds and, and getting the grain and walking into the, the robot. So we usually recommend to do that uh, about a month before uh, they're ready to calve and, and doing that for about a week, um, ideally twice a day. If you can't, then once a day. Uh, but we find there's a lot of success doing that because the cow comes in, it's a bit, le the effort come in, comes in and there, there's already less stress because she knows what she's getting into. And uh, we get to the three uh, visits a day uh, way faster, way sooner. So that's uh, uh, really one of the best way to get the heifers trained uh, prior to milking them. Awesome. Thanks very much, Denis. Uh, this next question is going to be for Gray. Uh, and this is uh, in regards to uh, the discovery. Um, is it possible to tractor scrape uh, alongside a discovery when you have outside area that needs to be tractor scraped? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that's an interesting question. Uh, here in British Columbia, I've noticed there are a fair number of people who have things, you know, whether they be called an exercise yard or or a paddock that's used to access uh, a pasture or whatnot. I, I think the quick answer would be yes. You could have an area that was tractor cleaned alongside of a collector. Uh, one of the nice things about the collector is it doesn't require <clears throat> any modifications to a burn that would get in the way of tractor cleaning. Uh, in fact, if you were to have for whatever reason um, a significant downtime event, uh, one of the nice things is you can go ahead and use your tractor to clean out. There's no alley scraper in the way. There's no drop slot to drive over or cable to be wary of. So, so I would say they, they can be used in conjunction uh, with one another. But I would re reiterate that any area that's seeing a significant amount of cow traffic, we would like to see that be cleaned every two hours. So where possible, I, I'd prefer to automate everything, but if, uh, if it made it work for a unique situation, then, then yes, you could use the two in conjunction. Great, thanks, Gray. Uh, this next question is coming in, it looks like it's for Brian. Brian, you talked a lot about the features and the benefits of, of the vector and how that pays. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that robot works? <clears throat> Okay, so basically um, there's, a, there's a feed kitchen. Uh, it's a secure area as the, the grabber can be somewhat dangerous um, if someone were in there. The, the farmer loads the kitchen. He puts blocks or round bales of feed in specific um, quadrants, I guess you'd call them. There's basically lines painted on the floor. He tells the kitchen that these feed types are in these places. Um, and then the kitchen then, the grabber comes and grabs it from the top and loads it into the wagon. 
The grabber loads the oldest feed in the kitchen first in order to maintain freshness. And it also it also scans every block as it's as it's going to grab and grabs from the highest point first. Um, the reason it does that is that if you just dig down the one side, there's a chance the block will fall over. And that also ensures that it's always grabbing the exposed feed um, um, right away. So that essentially will maintain the freshness. It's loading the, the mix in whatever order that you tell the computer to load it. Um, once the MFR is loaded, uh, basically it pulls out of the kitchen, it goes on a pre-programmed route. While it's driving to wherever it's going to feed, it is pushing the feed up and measuring the amount that is there. Um, and once it's once it gets back, it calculates which one which one is uh, next to be fed. And before it actually even gets to the kitchen, it's letting the kitchen know which one it's going to feed, so it can begin preparing to load the next load. Um, and basically, that cycle continues. Then within T for C, which is our management program or Horizon in the future, I guess. I would assume that um, I would assume assume Horizon is the same. But you essentially enter the dry matters and the you enter the dry matters of each feed type as well as the costs of each feed type. And from there, um, that's how T4C gives you the reports of what was what the cost was as fed, what the dry matter was, et cetera, et cetera. Question here. Uh, we want to thank everybody for the participation. Uh, we got one more question. It's going to be directed at Denis. Denis, what advice do you have for people in the way of calf feeding um, that are considering uh, robotic milking or that are currently utilizing robotic milking? Um, so there's multiple ways to go about feeding calves with robotic uh, uh, on robotic farms. Uh, we have multiple options for that. Uh, some of the simplest uh, ones we have would be to have a colostrum arm. So it's basically just an arm uh, coming uh, by the robot where you can dump, uh, you can d um, have uh, milk separated directly into a pail or whatever uh, container you have there. Uh, we have the M for use, which is a milk for use buckets, a uh, tray of four, four buckets where you can uh, uh, send milk separation, colostrum, any kind of milk uh, to each uh, bucket. And it'll tell you which cow is in, in each bucket, how much milk is in there. Um, and then um, the, some of the best solution, I'd say it's either uh, going with, uh, with um, uh, the Calm Feeder, uh, which is one of uh, our options from uh, uh, Lely. So uh, again, automating uh, everything on a farm is that would be part of that solution. Um, so um, yeah, robotic yeah, robotic feeding for those ca for those calves, uh, whether that's with uh, with raw milk or uh, or milk powder that can be done uh, in both situations. Uh, and the other option would be to use a second milk line and send it to, directly to uh, milk taxi, uh, which the milk taxi you get, again gives you the option to feed raw milk or or feed uh, uh, milk powder and then uh, gives you also the option to pasteurize uh, which is uh, probably one of the best solution as well is, is to be able to pasteurize that milk as we all know we don't necessarily always send the right milk to the calves awesome thanks a lot a lot of great questions everybody um, we are unfortunately running low on time we wanted to get everybody out of here by three o'clock so we want to thank everybody again for your participation today we sincerely hope that this was an enjoyable and informative presentation for everyone. In closing, I would like to say that at West Coast Robotics and Lely, we are without a doubt at the forefront of farming innovation. We are and always have been the leader in farming automation. For many years, the industry has followed in our footsteps as we've paved the way in automated milking, feeding, and manure. As you look towards the future of your family farm, please consider West Coast Robotics as a strategic business partner in developing your dairy operation. If you would like more information on the products that we've discussed today, you can contest, contact us anytime at 604-796-5532. You can find us at West Coast westcoastrobotics.ca or at West Coast Bots on Instagram. And again, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for joining us today. From Brian and Angelina and the entire West Coast Robotics family to yours, we want to wish everyone in the dairy community a very Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy new year. Stay classy, British Columbia.